Kalevo has arrived in Warframe, and to my surprise, he's actually really easy to understand. For example, if he wants this entire room of enemies dead, he just makes that happen. Simple. So let's have a look at what he does and how you can use that. I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. Kalevo is accessible very early game, though he takes a while longer to obtain than the other very early game frames. To obtain Kalevo, you'll need to face off against him in Duviri. This can be done in both the Duviri experience or Lone Story, so long as the mood spiral is either anger, fear or sorrow. The Lone Story only has a chance of Kalevo's fight, being one of the stages, mind you, so if you wish to guarantee a fight against him, then you'll need to do the Duviri experience. Should you not get him as a main stage, you can still go to Kalevo's hold anyway and fight him as a side objective. DE have also implemented a short event on release to obtain Kalevo a little more readily by entering you into a lone story experience with a guaranteed Kalevo fight. The only other difference between this and normal lone story is you spend 5 pathos clamps to load in this way. Functionally otherwise, it's just lone story, available solo and in a squad. Once you've defeated both Kalevo and the Aura Worm in Deviri, don't forget the Aura Worm, you'll be able to leave and receive some Kalevo's Bane. This is a token type resource, granting 4 to 6 on normal mode, or 6 to 8 on the steel path. You can trade in that currency with Akrathis in your Dormer Zone to purchase Kalevo's main blueprint and component blueprints, as well as Kalevo's signature shotgun. In total, you need 42 Kalevo's Bane for a set, which means facing him 7 to 11 times on the normal mode, or 6 to 7 times on steel path mode. How long it takes you to fight Kalevo, as well as complete the rest of the Deviri Experience mission, will naturally vary based on the gear and skill of you and your squad, plus the luck of which objectives spawn. Add on getting the resources, and it's not unreasonable to say it'll take around 3-5 to five hours to get Kalevo. Once you've got the parts and built him, here's the features you'll have access to. Kalevo is an unusual Warframe due to lacking any shields. This includes being unable to gain shields or overshields from any source. To make up for that, Kalevo comes with a high health pool behind only Anaros and Grendel, as well as a high armor value behind only Valkyr Prime and Lavos. This makes Kalevo plenty resilient in lower to mid tier missions, though cracks will begin to form once he's brought onto the steel path. We can mitigate that though, as you'll see later on. Kalevo's passive grants him plus 100% heavy attack wind up speed, reducing the delay between starting the attack and making the swing, as well as a 75% heavy attack efficiency reduce the amount of combo consumed on completing a heavy attack. Immediately, it's clear that Kalevo is intended to get into the fray and deliver high damage, while also being modestly susceptible to damage at higher tiers. So let's look at the active abilities. His first is Wrathful Advance. This is a very simple to understand ability. If you look at an enemy and tap the ability, Kalevo will charge up a heavy melee attack and then teleports the enemy at the moment of making the attack. Check out my guide on heavy attacks to know more about optimizing those. This is where Kalevo's passive comes in very handily to both speed up the ability and reduce the cost to your combo. Not only that, the teleport also increases Kalevo's critical chance. At base value on a max level Kalevo, this is a plus 200% absolute critical chance, applied after all other bonuses are calculated and scaling with his strength. With mods going around like Sacrificial Steel offering plus 220% critical chance on its own, or plus 440% on heavy attack, this might lead you to misunderstand Kalevo's bonus. This 200% bonus is regardless of your weapon and mod stats, just directly adding to your final critical chance value. If after all mods you have a 50% critical chance, Wrathful Advance makes that 250%. If you boost Kalevo to 200% strength, doubling the effect of the ability, then you'll have a total of 450% critical chance here. Kalevo completely eclipses the critical chance you can achieve on all melee weaponry with a single ability cast. The buff also lasts for 10 seconds after the teleport, allowing you to continue to deliver devastating blows. If you are new to Warframe, over 100% critical chance might sound totally meaningless. Simply put, the critical bonus of your weapon can be applied multiple times over if you get above 100% critical chance. For each 100% critical chance, you are guaranteed to have the bonus applied one more time, and the remainder is a chance for yet another critical bonus on top. So 450% means a guarantee of 4 times the critical bonus, with a 50% chance of a 5th critical bonus again. Your critical bonus is 1 less than a critical multiplier, such that a 2 times critical multiplier 
means a bonus of 1 times your damage. 450% critical chance would be a guarantee to increase your damage by 1 times, 4 times over, and a 50% chance to increase it a further 1 times, giving you either 5 times or 6 times damage on hit. For higher critical multipliers, you can easily get to 20 times or even 30 times damage bonuses here. Suffice to say, this is strong. Absurdly strong. The previous strongest Warframe for giving critical chance bonuses in this fashion was Harrow, who'd give you a max of 50% critical chance to all weapons on body shot, or up to 200% critical chance on a headshot. While Kalervo is limited to only buffing melee weapons, and specifically only himself, it takes no charging up, one quarter of the energy to cast, and the base value is better than the maximum value Harrow can offer, yet without the headshot requirement. Raffle Advance also comes with the option to hold down the ability cast, allowing you to teleport without having to target an enemy. This skips the heavy attack if not pointed at an enemy, but still gives you the critical bonus for the normal duration. As a usability tip, you can go into your options, select Invert Tap Slash Hold Abilities, and change Kalervo to Inverted. This makes the tap cast an instant teleport to whatever you're pointing at. This makes teleporting and targeted faster, but has the downside of always teleporting on tap cast, rather than only when you successfully aim at an enemy in range. Use standard settings if you're mostly using his one to kill, and don't want wasted teleports, or switch to inverted when using Kalevo's ability to quickly blink around the map. Lastly on this, Raffle Advance is available via the helmet system to other Warframes, at the cost of half the base critical bonus and range. Still strong, but not as strong. Next, we have Recompense. This is a simple ability, summoning 10 daggers around Kalevo. Each dagger will home in on a nearby enemy, with a base seek range of 8 meters. If it hits an enemy, you deal 500 damage to them while Kalevo will heal 200 health, or 200 overguard if his health is full. If after 5 seconds there are any daggers which have yet to find an enemy, they'll instead turn back in and hit Kalevo for 35 damage. The damage and healing stats are all affected by strength, and the seek range is affected by range. While only 3 daggers can hit any one enemy, requiring 4 enemies within range to use up all the daggers, Kalevo will always have a net gain of health so long as at least 2 daggers can land, requiring just a single enemy. Do be aware that the self damage from this ability ignores damage resistance, meaning that losing overguard to extra daggers is effectively cheaper than losing health. The dagger damage is good for early game, but it falls off over time, even with the guaranteed slash proc. The ability also grants one combo to your melee combo meter for each dagger that hits, but that's again a small contribution. This ability is most important for the healing and overguard it provides. With all daggers landing at base strength, Kalevo can heal 2000 health, an incredible amount for a quick healing ability. The overguard feature has been a bit controversial with various parts of the community, especially as it is capped at a max of 5000 overguard from this ability. Overguard acts as an extension of your health ball, but gains no benefit from armor mods, nor mods like Adaptation, and is incompatible with mods like Rage. None of this is a bug. This makes the hit points it offers much less effective at higher levels, where higher armor and the Adaptation mod can be expected to be used on a health tanking Warframe. Kalevo, however, is available very early game, albeit with quite a grind. This Overguard feature provides a high amount of hit points for lower tier play, doubling his EHP when built with just a max rank vitality for defense. In addition, Overguard also provides knockdown immunity. It's not total status immunity, but is more akin to a newbie alternative to Prime Sure Footed. For higher tier play, the Overguard becomes increasingly less valuable and durable, putting higher demands on supporting Kalevo's health pool instead. Incidentally, it's high level players who also have access to means to massively improve the effectiveness of health tanking. But defense isn't Kalevo's focus anyway, as shown by his third ability, Collective Curse. Kalevo sends out a wave of energy to 25 meters in a forward 65 degree cone, connecting all enemies it hits with an intangible tether. This curse can penetrate all terrain, chaining even unseen enemies. While the curse is in effect, at base 25 seconds, any damage Kalevo deals to a chained enemy is also applied to all other enemies in the chain. This chain has a variety of curious properties. The base damage chaining is 50%, meaning if you deal 1000 damage to one enemy, all the others will take 500. You can increase the chain to a maximum of 100%, with 200% strength. Any damage shared is after all modifiers on the initial target. For example, if you hit an enemy weak to corrosive damage with corrosive, 
the sheer damage to other enemies will account for the bonus applied, even if they aren't also weak to corrosive, potentially dealing more damage to the chained enemies than if you shot them directly. Status effects are not spread through the curse, but the damage of those effects does get spread. The damage carried over is based on the damage pop-up you see, not just the enemy's remaining hit points. This means if you hit an enemy with 100 hit points for 1 million damage, the share damage will be based on the 1 million, not the 100. All of Kalevo's own attacks, including guns, melee and abilities, will chain through the curse, but damage dealt by his companions or allies can't chain. If you cast the curse twice and chain two groups of enemies, dealing damage to one group will affect the second group as well, so long as there's at least one link between the groups. If the two groups are completely disconnected, however, damaging one will not hurt the other. Strangely enough, the type of hit points you are hitting has a huge effect on how it chains. If you shoot an overguarded enemy, the chain damage will only hurt the overguard of other enemies, or otherwise do nothing. If you shoot the shields of an enemy, the chain damage will hurt the shields and overguard of connected enemies, but deal zero damage to health. If you deal damage to the health of an enemy, the chain damage will hurt the health and overguard of connected enemies, but bypass shields entirely. Lastly, the chain damage counts as ability damage, therefore it won't trigger the bonuses on your guns such as Primary Merciless. However, if the damage that triggered the chain was delivered by your melee weapon, then the chained hits will also generate melee combo as if you hit those enemies directly too. You know, come to think of it, I said Kalervo was easy to understand, but there really are a lot of moving parts here. The main takeaway is that you can curse a whole group of enemies, strike one of them down, and the others will fall over too. For maximum value, hit the enemy in the chain that will give you the highest damage number on health, while avoiding targeting small damage on shields or overguard if possible. On Kalervo, your Wrathful Advance and Collective Curse will probably be your bread and butter. Link up all the enemies, and then smack one of them with the mother of all heavy attacks. Boom, room cleared. This sheer damage output is what makes Kalervo's relatively limited defense in high level play less of a concern. Taking hits is absolutely dangerous, but it's hard for enemies to hurt you when you level a whole room without even being able to see some of the targeted enemies. Finally, for the abilities, we have Storm of Ukko. This ability creates a damaging zone surrounding the spot Kalervo is at when he casts it. While visually the ability seems to randomly rain down daggers, the actual damage hits all enemies in the area every half a second for the ability damage and applying a stagger and slash status effect. With a base damage per second of 2500 and the duration of 15 seconds, this is a lot of damage output able to tear through enemies, especially if they're afflicted by Collective Curse to multiply each hit out. The downside is this comes with a 10 meter radius and 100 energy cost. Enemies in the zone may regret waking up that day, but every enemy outside this small area couldn't care less. Storm of Ukko is effective, but lacks the application to stand out against the rest of Kalevo's abilities and really justify the cost. As a utility positive, Storm of Ukko also generates combo with every hit, perhaps allowing you to get maximum combo if cast directly onto a group of strong enemies. If you have access to the helmet system, this will usually be the ability slot I'd suggest replacing. On Railjack, Storm of Ukko is the ability Kalevo provides to the tactical menu for those of you who remember that that exists. In essence, Kalevo has a damage ability with teleport, damage ability with heal, area damage ability through chaining, and area damage ultimate. He's all about the damage. So let's look at building for him then. To start with is a super newbie build. This can be used with no former, no Oricon Reactor, and mods which are not too hard to get hold of in the earlier stages of the game. With relatively balanced casting stats, you can use Kalevo's kit quite effectively, and you've got additional tank and energy generation with the combo of Vitality and Rage. The choice of aura is entirely optional, just use what fits. But you don't want to be sticking around on a newbie build forever. As you make your way around the star chart, you can invest more thoroughly towards this build here. We've dropped down the duration stat from the newbie build, as the only abilities it really matters on are his 1, which is cheap to cast, and his 4, which isn't that important to use. Instead, we've got more range, more strength, and more energy max to make better use of the potential energy income. The 200% strength here is a breakpoint of sorts, a soft cap. While you can take Kalevo beyond 200% strength and gain benefits for doing so, the cap on his third ability means it's not as valuable to keep going. Still, Fully modding like this to get to 200% strength is worth it for the 100% damage replication on all cursed enemies. 
As the build title suggests, this is only a mid-tier approach. Once you've cleared the star chart and get into the higher tiers of upgrade options, we can shift towards affording this. This is only a two-former build here, giving a soft goal for a build that handles all factions at all non-endurance levels. Once again, we're focused on that high-range, high-strength approach. However, now we're also bringing in Arcanes. Arcane Steadfast is an efficiency-style Arcane, allowing for free ability casts from time to time. This reduces the demand for efficiency on the build, and can even allow you to throw down Storms of Ukko in choke points without having to think about the energy drain. For defense, we've upgraded to Umbral Vitality, enhanced by Umbral Intensify, as well as using both Adaptation and Arcane Guardian. Kalevo comes with a decent amount of base armor, increased further by leveling to 30, and Guardian takes that yet further. If you've not run a health tank in Warframe and Steel Path before, I can assure you it does work for all typical non-endurance missions. You just need to remember you're not immortal, so dodging or killing things like Blitz Eximus is a requirement. Still, treating adaptation as around two-thirds damage reduction, as outlined in my video on adaptation, on top of the 83.8% damage reduction from armor, Kalevo is rocking roughly 95% damage reduction on health, sporting over 30,000 effective hit points. Given we can full heal near instantly with Kalevo's 2, he's actually quite sustainable. Theoretically, you could swap Arcane Guardian for Arcane Reaper. There are, however, two issues with this. One is that Reaper provides a lower armor bonus in exchange for a healing over time effect. Kalevo's got healing down just fine when he needs it, so it's more just the loss of the armor to consider. Guardian is pretty reliable as is if you're in the kinds of missions where you can health tank. If you can't live long enough to proc Guardian, the armor from Reaper probably won't save you neither. The second and much more pressing issue, however, is that Arcane Reaper is both very new and in rather limited supply. This will change with time, but for now, it's not going to be the cheapest nor quickest Arcane to obtain, for bonuses that look nice, but are probably not worth that much of an investment. This is why I've gone for Guardian instead. Now, this build is assuming you don't want to overinvest in Kalevo. With access to Archon Shards, you can take this even further. One or two Azure Shards will be able to grant you some Energy Max to replace Primed Flow. With that out of the way, you can instead introduce Karnis Carapace. This will further raise your health and armor by a little bit, but the far more important stat is the set effect, granting evasion and status immunity on heavy attack kill. This is Kalervo we're talking about, literally made for heavy attacks. This will further enhance your durability, especially against status effects. Consider using the other Karnis mods on your secondary and melee weapons to get the maximum duration from the effect. Should you want to fully invest to get total knockdown immunity, you can pop an Umbral Former onto either of the Umbral mods, or a couple Former on the other remaining slots. With this, you'll be able to fit Primed Sure Footed into the Exilus slot with a Former too. That's a significant investment for just knockdown immunity, but it does make up for the higher levels where you can't rely on Overguard to do it for you. Finally then, we come to their Helmet build. Again, we're looking at this first from a two former approach, assuming you've not gone all in on investing into Kalevo. While there are a number of options to pick from, my favorite choice would be Nourish. This ability, replacing your fourth, will allow you to gain substantially more energy from all sources to help your sustain, granting you viral damage bonuses to deal even stronger attacks, and delivers stagger and viral status effects to attacking enemies to yet further increase your damage and survival. It's a solid all-rounder ability which works with Kalevo's kit rather than overshadowing it. Building for that specifically, I've removed Arcane Steadfast, as the energy income should now be absolutely abundant, and brought in Primed Continuity to boost the duration on Nourish. With only two former, we need to downgrade from Hunter Adrenaline to Rage, which isn't a terrible loss really. In place of Steadfast, I've gone for Arcane Fury, granting even more melee damage to again just keep scaling higher. You don't just have to go Nourish though. If you're more concerned about survival, you might consider using Quiver and equipping a Sentinel. Again, you'll want to bring your duration up, perhaps even using Crimson Archon Shards to help out yet further, and using Quiver to create an invisibility field to hide in. As much as you can't stick the arrow to yourself, you can stick it to your Sentinel by bullet jumping mostly horizontally, aim gliding, and then firing it just ahead of your Sentinel. This will take some practice to do it consistently, but does give you a means of mobile invisibility as an alternative survival method for Kalevo. This gives you a combination of teleportation, punishing melee strikes, and limited duration invisibility. Definitely a new concept that no other Warframe is capable of. 
most of this guide assumes you'll be heavy attacking. As I've already mentioned, you can check out my heavy attack guide for fuller information. For what I've been doing in this video, this Inadem is the heavy attack build I've settled on. Unusually for a melee build, it lacks any critical chance mod, with the exception of the Gladiator set effect, because of the critical hit that Kalervo provides. If you want to keep a higher critical chance when your ability is not active, you can use Blood Rush in place of Killing Blow, or in place of the Smite mod if you're looking for an all-rounder. You can also use this same approach on Zors in combination with the Zor Arcane Exodia Brave, granting energy restoration on heavy attack kill. The synergy there should be obvious by now. Overall, Kalervo is a very strong new frame. You can use him for enhanced gunplay through Collective Curse, turning basically every single weapon in the game into a powerful AoE. But his main strength is in being a ridiculously powerful and efficient melee user. His health tank is absolutely fine for pretty much all content, so if you're in the market for an active playing melee monster with fluid ability combos, Kalevo is the frame for you. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, what if you just set Kalevo's teleport to inverted tapcast? Then mod for starting energy, efficiency, range and mobility. Well then, you get a new means of blinking around a void capture mission. He's no Titania and Nova might want to have some words with him, but teleport Kalevo is absolutely a thing you can do. This build isn't optimised because it's more meme than mechanics, but sometimes a little screwing around goes a long way. Well, up to 62.5 metres per cast with this range. Anyway, that's enough about Galervo. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for more as it goes live, and as always, curse enemies, wipe rooms, and fight well, Tenno.